Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to talk about my official cooperation with EK Waterblocks with the EK Velocity 2 that is going to be compatible for direct die mount which is quite exciting especially to see something like this which is kind of like a niche product from a mainstream vendor like EK Waterblocks. It's also for me personally it's an honor to work with a company like EK and see my name on there or like at least my logo on some of these parts because it's an official EKX Debauer Corporation, which I'm very proud of. It's pretty amazing to see these products now coming to the market. Originally, they were made for Intel 12th gen. Now, 13th gen is out. I also did my pre testing with the 12900K, didn't test it so far with the 13900K. That's what I saved for today's video. And I'm quite curious what kind of temperature benefits we should see. There, we're going to compare it to this Corsair XC7 water block, just some ordinary water cooling. Then go over to contact frame mount, because it's also compatible with a contact frame. I'm going to show all of this close up in a second. And then go over to the lidding and then direct die mount. And also for full transparency, because you can see my Der Bauer logo on some of these parts. That is because I was involved in the development, gave some feedback on this, and I consider these very well-made products, very high quality, very good performing. That's why the logo is on there. I'm not participating on the sales. There is no royalty that EK is paying to Der Bauer for the usage of the logo. It's similar to the O11 Dynamics story with Lian Li. I also want to highlight or point out that the initial idea or demand for this project originated from KitGuru. They tried to do direct dye on a 12900K about nine months ago. And then they reached out to EK and that's how this entire thing started. And then EK reached out to me. And then KitGuru did a follow-up video with an EK prototype about five months ago. And now we are here to test the final unit. But credits definitely have to go out to KitGuru for the huge amount of testing they did. We are using the results of my Corsair XC7 block as a baseline. I also have a Mora attached on the back, which has a huge capability of dissipating heat, also will lead to very, very stable water temperature values. So we can be sure that any kind of temperature deltas will only be a result of a different cooler. We are doing baseline testing with Cinebench R20. It's a manual overclock with a stable voltage to make sure we eliminate all kind of influencing factors. You can see the P cores are clocked to 5.7 E cores to 4.4 GHz. The memory is clocked at 6000 MHz C30 and the board we are using is the Maximus C790 Extreme. Now looking at the temperature chart and results using the Corsair XC7 block, I also decided to leave the idle temperatures, which you can see at the beginning bottom left area that is between 33 and 36 degrees Celsius and during load which is about 20 seconds for Cinebench R20 we see temperatures between 92 to 93 degrees Celsius and that's the average temperature across the peak course. Here we have the EK Velocity 2 direct die compatible CPU block which is pretty awesome and the fact why it's so awesome is especially this tiny elevation in the center that's what's making this a lot different from a conventional water block because a conventional CPU water block would just be flat and if you go for a direct die mount which means that you will remove the heat spreader of the CPU you might replace the ILM or you have to replace the ILM with for example a direct die frame that holds the CPU inside the socket you will change the mounting position, like the C height of the cooler. So first of all, your water block is likely to collide with some of these surrounding components like capacitors. And secondly, and we can probably explain this with this DAT 12900K, you have additional components that are surrounding the chip. Especially on the bottom, you would have SMDs that have a height of about 0.8 millimeters. Whereas the chip in the center has about 0.84, at least on this CPU. So it's a tiny difference and it's very likely that the cold plate, if it was flat, would contact to these tiny, like... SMD caps. It could shorten them, it could crush them just by the mechanical force and that's something you can bypass having this elevation in the center. The block will be mounted using the EK exact mount backplate and this is also at the same time mounted over either a direct die frame which would be this one to hold the CPU in place or it can also be mounted with a contact frame so you don't have to always delete your CPU. So we're starting with that one with a contact frame 
So that would be without deleting, but it's also straight replacing the Intel ILM for better mounting because it will eliminate the bending of the CPU. We start with removal of the original ILM. I usually leave the CPU in the socket simply to protect it. Otherwise, I tend to drop things into the socket just for protection reasons. And now in the next step, we are replacing the original Intel backplate that's behind the board with the EK exact mount backplate. And on top of this, we will put the contact frame. And this way, you could now proceed to mount a normal EK Velocity 2 block, not the direct die mount one, because you wouldn't need this additional elevation. Also, the height or the positioning would be a little bit different. We obviously want to go directly for deleting and direct die, which means I'm just going to take out the CPU back out of the socket, remove the contact frame one, and we start with deleting of the 13900K. For deleting, we are using our 13th gen deleter, which we developed from Thermogrissi side over the previous months. And this is going to be totally safe for a 13900K. For 12th gen, I cannot guarantee that it will work 100% safe because there were some issues with these like tiny components up here and down there. And that is caused by having the indium solder sheet that can, yeah, be a little bit overlapping on the left or right on some of the 12th gen CPUs. And then if you move the IHS to the side, there is a potential risk that you damage some of these. That's something I have seen on the web with similar style deleters with 12th gen. That's why we never released it for 12th gen. And we are just going to advertise this for the 13th gen. But also EK is working on a deleter that is safe for 12th gen. It's a little bit more complex but it's going to be safe for 12th gen, which is really awesome. For the 13900K, pretty straightforward. We have a triangle on the side. We also have a triangle engraved in the deliter. Just place it in here. The slider, which is responsible for pushing the IHS to the side at the same time securing the CPU in the deliter during the deleting process. Let's slid in there and then tighten this one. And then just using mechanical force without heating up or anything, we can delete the CPU. At a certain point, you will also notice that there's like no force needed anymore. You can turn it by hand and then you know the CPU is deleted. Next step is cleaning the CPU. First of all, we have to remove all the remaining glue. Use any like sharp piece of plastic, no metal parts, obviously. Otherwise you might scratch or damage the PCB. And then we also have to remove the indium solder in the center. You could use a razor blade, which is something I personally often do. Otherwise you can also use just a bit of liquid metal, put it on top, wait for five to 10 minutes and the liquid metal will form an alloy with the remaining indium and you can usually wipe it off in one step. Worst case, you will have to apply the liquid metal twice. After the first round of liquid metal, a lot of the indium is already gone. We will definitely have to apply a second round. Also pay attention that if you wipe off the liquid metal, make sure that you wipe it off to the direction where there are no SMD caps or resistors. You should definitely avoid contact of the liquid metal with these. The CPU is ready, cleaned and already back in the socket. The next step is mounting the CPU the same way as we did it previously with the contact frame, but now with the direct die frame. If you look at the direct die frame, you notice that there is some kind of shape in the center, like a rectangle. 
and this shape will apply the appropriate force onto the CPU PCB to make sure it's correctly mounted in the socket. At the same time you have cutouts surrounding it and these cutouts provide space for the SMD parts that are surrounding the CPU on the side. So these will not be shorted or receive any unnecessary pressure. This would be the CPU mounted with the direct die frame and now there's also this accessory included that's a highly compressible foam frame that's sticky on the bottom side and we can glue or attach this surrounding the die to protect the frame further from liquid metal because theoretically it's made out of aluminium and if you scratch it because it's it's anodized so it's not really a risk you don't have to do it but it's just additional protection and also if you are not sure about the amount of liquid metal if you maybe use a bit too much then this definitely provides additional safety because it will seal off with the cooler on top. That would be the result with the foam frame and also the liquid metal applied. Also applied a thin layer of liquid metal to the block just to coat it so not a lot just to make sure that it will have a good contact to the chip. Now mounting cooler and we can finally do the testing. The most important part when it comes to any kind of socket modifications like these, may it be contact frames, direct die, anything like this, is the mounting pressure into the socket to make sure that the memory is running. I already went to the BIOS, applied the same 6000C30 profile again, but you can already see that it booted straight into Windows. You could also just hear how it entered Windows. With any modifications like this, I also personally recommend to not run Cinebench R20 full out first. So I can just abort this quickly. I'm going to preferences and then for example, run four threads. This will load four out of the eight P cores. And this way you just, check if the mounting pressure is appropriate, if you missed anything. If you missed anything, then you would see any kind of weird peak temperatures, something like instantly 99 degrees Celsius or whatever. But as you can see right here, this all looks in line. So that should be fine. Also again, memory is 6000 megahertz C30. So that is also correct and running. And after this passed, I will perform the same testing again, but with all the cores loaded and we can check the temperature difference. We're starting off with the blue line, which is the 3900K with the Corsair XC7 block. That's about 92 degrees Celsius under load. Switching over to the EK Waterblocks Velocity 2 with the contact frame. We didn't see this mounted, but I tested this as well. And on average, I had about 88 degrees Celsius with this type of mounting and this type of cooler. It is better in general than the Corsair block, which could explain the rather big difference in cooling performance. I'm not quite sure how much the contact frame is doing because I did not test without contact frame. But if we switch over to the direct die mount, we see temperatures always below 80 degrees Celsius. So in summary, again just the average temperature during the load scenario in R20 it's 92.1 degrees Celsius with the Corsair block it's 88.4 with the velocity 2 and the contact frame and it's 77.5 on average across the P cores in R20 during the load phase which is a temperature improvement of 11 degrees Celsius compared to already a very good mounting and very good cooling performance with just the normal velocity two block and the contact frame. What you have to keep in mind with the 11 degrees Celsius temperature improvement is that we compared this to like the best scenario before that with a contact frame mount and a very good water block. If you would compare that without a contact frame, I think it's about 13 to maybe best case 15 degrees Celsius temperature improvement that you can realistically get with direct die. The good thing now is with this scenario with about 77 degrees Celsius under load with 5.7 gigahertz, we would have more thermal headroom for additional tuning because before that with the Corsair block, I was thermally limited with above 90 degrees Celsius. There is no more thermal headroom for increasing voltages to get more clocks out of the CPU, which would now be possible. That would be the next step to test. Didn't have time to do that yet with this specific 13900K, but you can see what's theoretically possible with this thermal solution. And I also want to add that it was a pleasure working with EK. They have some very, very skilled engineers and developing products with them 
is very exciting because they have a totally different approach, especially talking about the litter. There were some challenges or are challenges the leading 12th gen safe. And they certainly had some very interesting ideas how you can handle that. They will definitely have their own litter coming soon that should also be reliable for 12th gen. We will have the 13th gen litter available also soon. That's at least for 13th gen reliable, which I think is quite important because it's the, the latest and current gen. I originally shot this video about two months ago. We had a good amount of delays for just some paperwork organization development and stuff. That's also why I tested this with just the 13900K and not the KS, which is or would be a good timing now. But you can now find the entire kit online in the EK store. So it comes with a water block, with all the assembly stuff, the mounting, uh, liquid metal included, the guard, so this tiny foam piece and also a deliter made by EK. So you are pretty much ready to go just if you buy the entire kit. And I think for 350 euro, because it's a limited edition, only 100 pieces. I think it's a fair price, it's a very special product, but it was a very nice project to work on. Thanks again to EK and also KitGuru. And I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time, bye bye.